Hi, Amy is here and I'm gonna do another painting project and today I'm using some colors I've never used before with Dixie Belle. I'm gonna be using their blueberry and it's it's gonna be a shelf shelving unit that I'm actually putting up in my chalk couture room that I'm putting together right now. Can't wait to show you when that's done. I got the chalkboard wall done. Floors are installed, uh, walls are painted. All I have left to do is trim and I'll be able to show you everything so I'm excited about that. But let's, let me show you the piece I'm working on right now. Okay, I'm working on this right now, and you can see the colors, that's blueberry. Isn't that a gorgeous color? Here it is right here. I broke down and got the FIFO bottles. I love these things. I put all of my paints in the FIFO bottles now, so it's easy to get to. And um, what I've done so far, I'll put it in a before picture of this shelf. It's solid wood, bad shape. And, um, but I wanted a solid shelf to put my chalk couture paste, uh, like the chalk paste and all the products on. And so, you know, I figured 20 bucks for this at the Goodwill, I may as well jump on it. So I did. And what I did so far is I'm gonna insert pictures too. It had a lot of water stains, a lot of rings for water stains. And I was afraid that those were going to bleed through. So I did put um, two coats of the Dixie Belle Boss on in clear. And I know in the past I have referred to it as a primer. It's not an actual primer. It is a stain blocker and it gets rid of, like if you have a funky odor to your, at your project, it blocks odors and stains. So I should have used the words prepped. I use it to prep my pieces. I don't know what's gonna bleed through and so just as a precaution, I use that Dixie Belle Clear Boss um, to prep my pieces before I paint, just so I don't have any problems with bleed through and uh, any other problems. So that's just become part of my routine. So I've already done those two steps. I've cleaned it thoroughly. I um, prepped it with the boss in clear. And then I put on one, this, this is just one coat. Look at the coverage. That's just one coat. Look, you don't see a lot of brush strokes. I use the, um, the Klingon S500 paintbrush, which makes it, a paintbrush makes a big difference. But that's just one coat on this. So I did one coat and then we're going to be mixing these colors on the sides to give it kind of a, a cool look. I'm experimenting, I'm, I have no plan. I'm just gonna jump right in and we're just gonna see what happens. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm using my Klingon. I love these brushes. Um, they are, you know, the thick, it's like using a, chalk painting brush you know the thickness of a chalk painting brush but you get the width of a trim brush if that makes sense i love having the thickness look at how thick that is but having the width and so these are great for blending so both of them are they're damp they're not wet they're just damp because i washed them and i poured some blueberry and drop cloth on my plate i'm working out of my container of uh, sandbar just because I have some left in there after I put it in my FIFO bottle so I want to use it up. This is dry. I painted this yesterday and we're just going to play. I just want to blend some colors and make this look kind of beachy maybe. So start off with misting your piece. You want to have it misted. And I'm going to start off with the blueberry. The darker color on the outsides. Just going around the borders with the outsides. I know you can't see the whole piece, it's a very tall piece, but I got it zoomed in on the middle at least so you see a majority of it. And I wanna keep my paint wet while I do any type of blending. So there, I got a nice border, outside border of the blueberry. And you can see it dries much darker. Then I'm going to put some of my drop cloth on. Drop cloth is the next darkest. And I'm just going to line the square in the middle. Just bare, I mean, I'm barely dipping into the paint. Just making another square. Maybe a little bit more of it right here. And there's no like set rules on how to do this. We're just blending some colors to see what happens. And then dab that off. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the drop cloth. I probably poured way too much drop cloth on my, on my 
tray here. And I'm putting the drop cloth down the middle. So let me zoom in so you can see. So it's just stripes. You got the blueberry, sandbar, and drop cloth. Okay, and I'm going to use, I pick one of these brushes to use for blending, so I'm probably gonna use the brush that I dipped in the blueberry. And I'm just going to run my brush up and down to blend these colors out. If it gets dry, you mist it again with your mister. And it's gonna take a lot of strokes back and forth to get this to blend. Oopsie, paper towel. And you can go back and forth to speed up the blending a little bit. See how it kind of just, there is no right or wrong way to do this. It's just a matter of blending. And we can add more colors as we go. I don't know, I'll see how I like it. I might add some stormy seas to this. I haven't decided yet. But see, let me zoom in so you can see it while I'm zooming in. I'll focus on that little section right here. This section right here so you can see it. So as you can see, it leaves the stripes when I go vertically. See, it leaves the stripes, but if I go horizontally, your stripes start to disappear. And it blends it in. So I'm just working on blending these colors. Kind of went on a screenshot there for a second, sorry about that. And you can do a pop of color, like maybe you wanna, like I said, some stormy seas, get some dark stripes in there, or if you just want it subtly, subtle and beachy like this, then you just stay with the, the three colors. And I'm gonna pull it down again. See, my paint's staying nice and, what, nice and open is what they call it. It's staying open because I misted it with water and I just keep blending it out. So it looks like stripes on the camera. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to add a little blueberry in there. Just a couple. So I just put a couple of the little splashes of blueberry and I'm gonna pull those through. If I had, I don't have any darker browns. I would have liked, I don't have any darker browns on hand. Otherwise I would be adding probably some like driftwood. If I had some driftwood on hand, I would be doing driftwood in here, maybe. Or some of their swamp mud, I think it's called. Let me zoom back out so you can see it. See that, you can see where I put the blueberry in there and broke it up. Now I'm gonna put a little sandbar, go back to my other brush. I don't wanna contaminate my can too much. I'll put some sandbar. So just a couple, just so I can get some streaks in there. And like I said, I'm just playing and seeing what I come up with. And then I drag it through. And if it starts to drag at all, then you spritz it down. It's not starting to drag just yet, but I'm gonna spritz it down anyway just to mute the tones a little bit. Very little water. And then just pull the water through. Because you'll see the droplets of water in your paint until you've pulled it through. And I like, I like this area right here. Let me make sure I get all the way to the top of the shelf. And I am, and it's cold. I'm, got my painting jacket on there because I got the garage open for enough light and I'm shivering, I'm so cold. Probably not the best temperature to be painting a project, but this is not for a client. I got chunks of paper towels from when I was cleaning it that are stuck in there. 
They're like fuzzies. This is not for a client. If it's for a client, I would be doing it with the garage door shut and with the heater on. But it's for me. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So you can see the stripes. See the stripes? That's what I want. Just, now you can tell I do need more blueberry at the top. The light's hitting it. There is more blueberry than you can see. The way the light's hitting it, it's showing mostly the sandbar. But this is what I like right here. So you can see the, the blueberry peeking through. I can see the sandbar over here. Um, and up there I need some more blueberry. I'm not using much of the drop cloth. Might put a little drop. I'll put some drop cloth down here at the bottom. I'm too, too nervous to put too light of a color in there. So I wasn't putting much in. Okay. Right where I put those, I'm gonna blend some more blueberry in here. So it's just, I mean, there's no wrong or right way to do this. And I just saw something I love and I think I'm gonna to try to repeat it. Okay, so what I did, and I just saw it in a small area. It's so hard to talk, I'm freezing. Okay, so I had dipped my brush partially in the blueberry and then the other partially in the drop cloth. And then I'll do one, I already like that area there so I don't wanna mess with it. Um, let's go down here to the bottom, I'll do it there there so as you can see I got a little bit of each on here and I like what it ended up doing okay it okay let me zoom in I want you to see that hopefully build tell the there's a chunk of blueberry there and a chunk of drop cloth there see how oh that's off screen see oh, right there See right there? Half of the splash is blueberry and half is cream. And then when I blend it out, it blends out so pretty. Of course, it didn't mean for my camera to blur out. There you go. So see how that, that, that color right there? Doing, dipping half my brush in one color, the other half in another. I love that. So I just picked three colors that I wanted to work with. There you go. So I just picked three colors that I wanted to work with and it's just a matter of trial and error, keeping the sides misted while I blended and just randomly just splash colors in areas and blend it. And I like how it turned out so far. Now I just gotta get the other side to look the same way. And I might come back and put a little, maybe, some stormy seas in there. I'm not sure. Kind of like the softness. Let me let this dry and then I'll come back and let you know what I did. Okay, what the heck. I decided to try the stormy seas. So I'm dipping my brush a little bit in the stormy seas. And the other half in the drop cloth. So this half is drop cloth, this half is stormy seas and I'm just doing those little splotches. So right there, see how I did that? Just to add some dimension to it and because I'm playing because I can, because this is gonna be my piece, and spritz it and try blending it through. Some stormy seas in there. just for some extra lines. See how it added some lines to it? You can really see that one right there. So it just kind of gives it kind of a, a little more dimension, adding the gray. 
and add more water. To smooth out my brush strokes. And adding water also makes everything blend more. I actually started using water because of um, Thea at the Sweet Tea Life. I started watching her doing her Moody Blues piece, which is an amazing piece. If you haven't seen that piece of furniture she did, um, it is an amazing piece of furniture. I'm gonna add a little more of that gray, and this time I'm gonna dip it with the, the blueberry, one on each side. And like I said, this is just experimenting. You just throw some colors on and see Keep doing it until you get that area that you like. And then just repeat it all over. There is no mistakes when it comes to using chalk paint. It's just keep working with it until you get it the way you want it. It's so forgiving. And like, it's not exactly Bob Ross's saying, but it's similar to it when people say accidents are just opportunities to be creative. So if you don't know what you're doing, just mess with it. And if you make a mistake and you have to fix it, you learn from it. And then more great things end up coming from that. I used to only paint most of my pieces a solid color and then do the, um, Glay or the dark wax and then maybe decoupage just to add a little pop. I never played really pl played with colors and now that I have I just can't get enough of it. So I think I'm blending a little bit too much out. But I like the the color variation. I really like this area right here. I'll zoom in so you'll be able to see it better and I'm going to let it dry a little bit. I think that's the way I want it. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and I'm gonna try to repeat it on the other side. Okay, well, I'm gonna let it completely dry because like right now, um, you know, a lot of it's drying, like these dark areas here, that's dry, it's, it's drying. And then you have these shiny parts here that are still wet and that this stuff's really wet up here and, it's, and the light's hitting it so it's reflected as much lighter in color. So I need to let this whole thing dry and um, see how my, blending looks when it's dry you know versus some wet and some dark I, i'll keep playing with it and then i'll always have dry parts and wet parts <laughs> i'll never be done uh, so i'm gonna let it dry uh, but i'm glad i added the gray in it you really can't see the gray in it but i will take pictures uh, and, and you'll be able to see th these little gray stripes are very faint and subtle through the whole thing i'm glad i added the gray okay well, and then once this is dried I'll decide what I'm gonna do with it, but I'll probably end up first thing doing a clear coat, Dixie Belle top coat and satin. And then if I decide to do the grunge gray, I will show you that. Uh, you've all seen, you know, people top coat things, so I won't show you that part, because that's just brushing on top coat and letting it dry. But if I do the grunge gray um, uh, wax, then I will show you that. But if not, I think this is the look I want. I'm gonna just do this over the entire shelf, and I'll take pictures at the end so you'll be able to see what everything looks like. And um, if I do something different, I'll come back in and, and show you. <laughs> but right now, I just need to let this dry. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, well I'm back and I end up not really doing anything extra to it. I like the way it was. I did a little distressing and just put the Dixie Belle satin top coat on it and called it good. And I wanna show you how it turned out. Okay, so I moved it up here to the new craft room. It's not finished yet. I still have to put trim in and clean up and everything, but this is gonna be its new home. This is where I'm gonna be using it to store my chalk couture and my Dixie Belle stuff. And I'll put more on this wall, but this is just the first piece to be brought in. But I wanted to show you close up how it turned out. I distressed all the corners, so it'd be like natural wear. Can you see the top? See, that's where I put the little splashes of the blueberry. I like how it turned out. And I did each shelf, as you can see, I did each shelf, not the back. The back, I just left blueberry. But each shelf, I put a little bit of streaking in with the colors. And, there we go. So you can see it has that weathered look. So you can see like the drop cloth. See those little splashes, the blueberry. 
the stormy seas. You can kind of see the streaks of all the colors. And it's not wanting to focus. But I'll put some pictures in, but you can see. So that's not distressing. I mean, oh no, that is distressing. Never mind. Okay, so there's a little bit of distressing. I distressed where all the nails would be. Um, basically, just natural wear and tear type distressing. I just used a 220 grit sandpaper. See, yeah, you can see the streaks in it from the different colors that I added. And you can definitely see some of the brown stripes from the Stormy Seas colors. So that's how she turned out. I'm really happy with it. The shelves also have the streaks on them. So it just kind of gave it a beachy, there's a shelf with nothing on it. See how it just kind of, the streaks. It kind of gives a beachy, distressed, old, like shabby chic farmhouse type, a little bit of everything. The color and all the distressing makes me think of um, shabby chic farmhouse, but with the streaks, it kind of gives me that beachy vibe. So I'm real excited to have this as the new, well actually the first piece I've added to my craft room. And there's some of my chocolate tour stuff and the Dixie Belle stuff. Can't wait to show you this room when it's done, but there's the shelf. That was a pretty easy project. Okay, well, this is Amy with Fashion Toppings and AJ's Vintage Designs. Until next time, I hope you have a great day.